Welcome to Cosmic Comics, Games and Collectibles, your zen of geekism. We carry comics old and new, magazines, toys, games like Pokemon, Magic, D&D, Want Godzilla, Ultraman, Star Trek, Ninja Turtles, Funko Pops? You'll find it all here. Shop our Cosmic Sound Room and pick up a record or two. Enjoy our Comic Coffee Lounge with a cup of Sasquatch coffee or a delicious menu item while geeking out over a super cool movie on our big screen. Come by and say hello to Maui. Cosmic Comic, Games and Collectibles. Superman loves us and so will you. Hi everyone, Daphne Lage here. Join Nita Lanning and me on the Rage Into the Vlogs show where we talk about everything, nothing, and all the bits in between. Looking for hour-long conversations about indie comics, social media marketing, and crowdfunding? With the occasional rant and story time? Head on over to the Rage and 2 channel on YouTube, Mondays through Fridays at 11 a.m. Eastern to join in the chat. Hit the button! And good evening, good afternoon, and good night, everybody across the world, because this is an international scoped broadcast here. I am RJ Carter, Senior Managing Editor here at CriticalBlast.com, myopic proofreader for Critical Blast Publishing, Chief Envelope Licker for Critical Blast Logistics, and I answer the phones for Critical Blast Consulting. Yes, I am an entrepreneur, and I've been inspired by one of the best who is on our show tonight, uh, today, this afternoon. I don't know. Where am I? Uh, I have to check the sun. Anyhow, every year, we do a best of the year. We do the best movies, best comics, best television shows, and you, the readers, vote on them. And among all those categories, we include our monthly cosplay bombshells uh, so that you can pick who is going to be the bombshell of the year. Now, if he'll stay, <laughs> we'll talk to him. He's popped out a few times. He's using an Android. Uh, God bless technology in Britain. Um, Anyhow, yes, I know it's late March, almost April, and we're finally getting around to announcing our 2021 bombshell of the year. But co-hosting with me on that is Kara Nicole, Arizona Power Girl. How are you doing? I am doing great. It's a beautiful day out here. Our winter has ended. So, uh, yeah, I'm just uh, doing what I do, getting ready for con season. Yes, I went to my first convention of the year last weekend. I was so pumped. I... It's like it was a small one, but I hung around a long time just to soak it in, you know. Uh, and and the whole purpose of today's show, he's back online here. Uh, we have Jay, but Jay, I can't see you. I can see you down below, but I can't see you up above. Can you hear me? No, you froze up. Okay. Uh, we'll wait for Jay to um, restart and come back. He's using an Android, and they've been kind of flaky. Um but Jay is a cosplayer who was our December bombshell of the month. And you can actually find that on criticalblast.com. You can see uh, some of the stuff he's done here. Uh, he goes by the cosplay name of Thor on Instagram, uh, which I believe is linked in the description below. I'm going to add some more links too, because Kara, you sent me some links here that we're going to talk about your projects as well. Uh, he's back. Hello, Jay. Sorry, it keeps dropping out, but yeah. That's, uh... I noticed that. We'll, we'll <laughs> plow through. Okay. Uh, you're, you're still actually over here in another window, too, all frozen up, but it'll drop off in a second. Uh, okay. Probably take you with it when it goes. Um, so this is your uh, your Negan cosplay, which was one of the three that we featured on your December 
uh, bombshell. Uh, yeah. Right here. Who, who is that with you there? Her name's Ace. She um, does a Lucille Quinn, so it's like a mixture of Harley Quinn and Lucille. And uh, yeah, she's um, originally, I think, from Lithuania. I think she is, and uh, she's cosplay, and she's been uh, chasing me up for like two years to do um, a photo shoot with my Negan, which was a bit of a privilege because I, I don't feel my Negan's the best out there. It takes a lot more makeup than it does with other people. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a real privilege, and. Um, Obviously, you know, she goes, uh, how far are you prepared to go with it? And we just did that. And yeah. Was, was that good. at a convention somewhere or did you set up a photo shoot? That was actually at For Love of Horror in Manchester in the United Kingdom. So that was back in October around like Halloween time. So um, obviously it was like a proper horror convention and uh, had a few characters from like the scary movie yeah. set and um, lo loads of characters, to be honest, and uh, a few Walking Dead characters there, like uh, Michael Kudlitz, who plays Abraham. And uh, every time he sees me, he never appreciates that my character smashed his head in. So, oh. <laughs> so yeah, it always uh, doesn't go down well. But um, yeah, it was um, it was good fun. It was good weather as well. It, good weather held out for it because... Uh, Obviously, having that much makeup in your beard, you don't want to be stood in the rain for very long. Or <laughs> no, no, no. So yeah, uh, it, well, it's a great looking photograph. Uh, you know, for being at a at a convention, because Kara, we've talked before about the importance of not just the costume, but having the right photographer working Absolutely. with you. And yeah, this was... really, this really like embodies that. You really did a wonderful job. You know, uh, you talk about how sometimes with the character it's a little harder, but when you embody that character as you clearly do here, those little things, nobody sees it. You know, you see it, I get it, I see it in mine as well, but you can't see that. You really do get this feeling, this grit, the, you know, that Negan character that he is loving, but he's also cruel. And you just really nailed it. So good job. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Now, of course, I think the one that everybody, truly um latched on to uh because it was the, the christmas themed month uh you had this full body grinch outfit now this there's a lot of makeup there's a lot of um prosthetics going on in the face here as well I, obviously the full body suit you, you that that's okay everybody can get the suit but what you do that's, with the face and the makeup that that's, is that's not prosthetics good. that is actually a latex mask ah okay well then but that is actually a latex mask. I, can't, I can't take the credit for that. No, it's uh, I um, I've got a friend who's um, called Jason Foamsmith, and uh, he actually um, he's planning on building me a proper, real nice prosthetic face and a proper nice bodysuit because that was just um, two bits of Etsy I was able to pull together. It was um, I was being asked if I could do Grinch around Christmas for a lot of people around my local areas, and just wanted to spend a little bit more just to make it look more the part than a 30 quid suit off um, eBay and um, I put them together. And even though the colors didn't really mix, um, obviously I would have the suit on as well, you know, the Santa suit sometimes, but um, yeah, it, it just worked. And, um, but you know, typical cosplayer still not happy with it and looking to improve it again. So. But you know, this uh, goes to uh, what we talk about a lot uh, when we're talking with cosplayers about, you know, the difference between making it yourself and buying something store bought and, you know, which is more important. Uh, and if you're having fun with it and if you're making it work, it mm. doesn't matter if you can, uh, if it's something that's fully bought, if you are uh, working it. Um, Karen, now you make your own stuff, right? But, um, but you also both. buy stuff that's I just to make. I, I, I do both. I commit. If there's someone that I love their work and I don't have time, then yeah, I want mm. them to do it. If there's someone that I really, really love and I want their mm. craftsmanship, I want that. Um, I do make some things. I buy pieces. I'll buy stuff and mix and match it i mean this is cosplay not crafts you know it is yeah. crafts too but there is there, there really doesn't need to be a stigma around purchasing pieces creating something new from it or uh showing off other people's work it's about enjoying cosplay it's 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 play i'm i'm, I'm not a cause snob you don't have to shear the sheep and loom the wool <laughs> And then uh, we, we always do three pictures. Uh, we, we probably should get a fourth picture from you. So that when we run the article announcement, embedding the video, we'll have a new image. Uh, if you've got one, that's great. But this is the one that you're most known for, this character here. Um, how, yes. how, did, how did that come about? How did people say, hey, you're Thor? 
Well, it actually started after Ragnarok. I mean, um, after Thor Dark World, I wasn't really impressed with Thor. I mean, I liked his sort of mannerisms and his jokiness, but it wasn't until really Ragnarok that he started really coming out more how Chris Hemsworth portrays Thor rather than off a script. And um, a lot of people were saying, oh, you need to start doing Thor. I'm like, oh, I just can't get any with them. I'm Team Iron Man, really, which is really shameful of me being as I do Thor all the time. But, um, yeah. <laughs> but um, at the same time, I uh, this this guy called Mark, who actually uh, helps out as the crew at Wales Comic Con, which is a convention about three hours from where I live, kept saying, you must do it. And then when Infinity War came out, um, I went and had one, like, properly met made custom made from a site which was linked to somewhere in china um and the only thing that's left of that existing suit now would be that chest piece the arms are different the, the leggings are different and it's just what i've put together myself um because you know over time they just either get really fat up or worn and they just don't last so but um yeah it's it's a really good I'm ha- it's a suit i'm happy with now and uh now working on different Thors. Obviously, I've got a new suit made for me for the Love and Thunder, which is a guy called Knightly Creation who does a lot of um, working with EVA Foam. And um, I debuted that for the first time in February. I had the wig on for the first time, and I put it actually on TikTok, and uh, people thought it was Chris, which is always a really nice compliment. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah um, you can nail it that close to the movie. That That's great. Um you cosplayers remind me of some of the guys I grew up with in my small Midwestern town who were car hobbyists. And they're like always adding something to the car and then taking something off and replacing it. Like, yeah. just, it like, drives. Don't break it. But I wasn't into that. So, but but I get it. You know, you're like, I can make this a little bit better. I can make this a little more realistic. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Does, does that put you out a lot, though? I mean, you know, do you got to work extra hours to pay for your hobby? Um uh, Yes. Well, um, yeah, to be honest, yeah, <laughs> I, I, never really, I, I never really, really stopped, to be honest. No, I mean, uh, when I hit my 30s, I sort of look back on the last 10 years, like I really did work a lot through my 20s. I obviously parted as well, but I'm like, what have I got to show for it? Yeah, um, you know, so I try to calm down a bit and spend more time with like family, friends and uh, my partner. But, um, you know, like this weekend, I went um, to Durham, which is about three and a half hours drive for me. And, uh, was dropped in the deep end. It's like, yeah, we've got all these big interactive, like 10 grand's worth of dinosaur suits and that. And they're not just like any blow up dinosaur suit. These are the real things. Like this T Rex I stood next to was like five meters high. And this guy was in there interacting it like this. And I just turned up there to sort of meet this guy for the first time for future work. And um, he goes to me, oh, yeah, by the way, do you fancy playing a character called Dr. Jenkins? And I literally had an hour to sort of just look at a few uh, pages of dinosaur names. <laughs> And just you know played it off them um, off improvisation and um luckily it worked but um i can work with a crowd so it just sort of um sank in and just got on with it <laughs> but yeah, um you know role cosplaying is a lot of improv if somebody wants to improv, start interacting yeah. with you as a character yeah because uh, especially right. when you thaw like obviously i work with a lot of kids doing thaw and you get asked questions all the time and, and if, if, unless you've watched the movies like three million times there's always them kids that have got that one question it's normally a little kid that's got autism and is highly intelligent and literally you're sitting there going um and you could just pull something out of a bag and they believe it which is brilliant but um you know it's all good fun we like those questions to be honest carol, carol um what was your what was your first foray into cosplay? I mean, you're, you've been in this for a while now as a professional. It's been a minute. Yeah. Yeah, um, a minute, yeah. So my first cosplay was Power Girl, which is how I got kind of stuck with the name. Um, and it was before cosplay was as big of a thing as it was. And I uh, was a part of a little charity group and we would go to hospitals and we would do store events and we would go to movie theaters and, you know, announce the movie and do toys for tots and little like, charity events and that sort of thing we did adoption day and all kinds of fun stuff and it just kind of snowballed you go to a convention people start talking to you they want to hire you for stuff and it just builds and and at some point do, do you remember at what point it was where you're just like you know what this is my career now because because that's pretty much when, what it is now right i mean this is your yeah. full-time job when the conventions took over my ability to work a full-time job 
that's when that happened because I can't go to a convention every weekend or three times a month or twice a month. You can't take that time off of work. Like that's really not an option. So it just kind of, I had to make a choice at one point because I was doing so many shows that I just couldn't keep up on both. I couldn't craft and go to shows. I mean, you're really, you're going to be gone for, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, or Thursday through Sunday, you're, you know, it's exhausting. So I just had to kind of make a choice and I chose cosplay. I, I think you made the right choice. Uh, hello, Lorenzo Sleestack. We've seen the chat there. Robert, Robert, I didn't mean to ignore you. I see you out there too. Um, yes, yes. Let's throw, let's throw the compliments out to Carol. Of course we will. <laughs> I, I'm sure she appreciates that. And speaking of, Kara's got a new um, comic book out. Uh, yes, she's I... not not just a cosplayer. Now she's writing comics. Yes. And studying um, them. So this is Unstable Frequencies, and it's a four-story horror anthology. And for those of you who follow me, you know that I've done Fire Bitch, which was my superhero. Uh, Alfred and I had created a superhero that was for the modern era. She has a cell phone. She's a social media influencer, that sort of thing. So it's funny. It's superheroes. Well, this is horror. This is our hostess. She is essentially our crypt keeper. Like if you're thinking of, um, you know, Tales from the Crypt, Twilight Zone, that sort of thing. And you can get all four books or you can break it up and get, you know, you can get the anthology or you can get them as individual floppies as well. Tons of variant covers. You can get all the covers. We've got some extra prints. Um, we brought in different artists. So we've got four different uh, pencilers, four different uh, colorists. We maintained an inker and a um, letterer throughout the stories, but they're all drawn differently. They're all done in different styles. Um, and it's four different stories in four different locations across the world at four different points in time. So uh, we've got Natalia, who is a rich heiress going down to Colombia for a rave. And that's a zombie story in, 20, in the 2080s. Then we've got Michelle, who is a college student in Australia in the 1980s. And that's a murder mystery story um, in Australia. Then we've got Dee Dee, who is a psychic in 2030 in Colorado. And that's a ghost story that's drawn by C.B. Zane. Um, and then we have Ruth, which is the story of a young woman in an insane asylum in the early 1900s. And she is uh, an amputee. She's missing her legs. Now, you've got, um, th there are cosplay versions of these covers here. There's multiple variations of all the different covers. Uh, Lee Marvell, good to see you out there in the chat. Thank you for popping in, man. Appreciate it. Uh, and I was going to ask you, who else you got to star on these covers? Because when I saw some of them, you were cosplayed out to a point where I'm like, is that Kara? Because I can't tell now. Yeah, uh, it's either Art or it's Kara or it's both. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we can see different. Uh, we got Shikari. We have an inks only book with no uh, words. So you can just get the, the inks from the art. Uh, you can buy the entire anthology. The main book is uh, supposed to have extra stuff in it. We also have a production book available as well in spicy and sweet. Um, so you can get some of the behind the scenes, what the scripts look like, what uh, the characters, you know, development was, what we think about them, that sort of thing. Now, is this a, um, is this going to be a series? Are you going to continue this on with more stories or are you going yes. to just... Was, yes, okay, but it's cool. not its not going to necessarily be these. So the next book will not have the continuation of these four stories. We've got other stories. Right, because it's an anthology of shorts, and you'll have uh, right. new and characters, I would guess. Some might continue, the... and some might not, and that's going to be also what the fans think as well. So, um, But it won't be every single book, these stories. Like, we'll put in different stories, and then maybe one of these will come back later. Uh, that is our Jay Ferguson cover. It is gorgeous. He is an incredible painter. I love that guy. Um, so, yeah. Any well, questions? A ton, ton of different variations. Um, yeah. Jay, have you ever thought that your cosplay would take you in other directions other than just going to conventions? I mean, you know, you're, you're getting the attention now. Um, um well yeah i mean it always just started off with um cons that i didn't think i'd um 
be picking up like children's parties and being asked back to events like charity work and things like that. But um, it wasn't until the sort of the first lockdown happened and uh, I got put on furlough for like four weeks. And it's, sorry, that's my dog snoring, by the way. She's a French bulldog. Um, that's not that's not me making noises like that. Um, but um, yeah, I, I just literally um, put my suits to use. So just um, my care inside you know, came out. I was like, well, if I was a kid, not be able to see my friends and not have a birthday party because everything was being cancelled, I'd be really scared and really confused. Um, I'm a sufferer of mental health myself, so I'm just thinking what the parents having to do now, having to obviously self-teach their kids and probably going through full-time sort of looking after their kids and that, are they coping well? So I just, you know, mixed it about a bit. I used my hourly exercise to go see people on the doorsteps, wish kids happy birthday and do whatever the town really wanted from me, really, as long as it was in social distancing rules. And it just grew from there. That's wonderful. That's lovely. Thank you. Um, you know, it was just how I have always was. So just ha- how I thought of it. I, I try and think things outside the box of what people see. And um, I'm usually quite right. I, shame I can't see my own sort of fate but, uh, or listen to my own advice. But, uh, yeah. But that, well, yeah. Tara, um, if somebody does think that they want to take their cosplay professional, because, uh, you know, you had a job, you, you quit the job because you're going to go the convention circuit. There's a lot more to it than just say, this is my new job. Because when you're your own employer, there's a ton of shit you got to set up. Uh, mm-hmm. You can't just show up to work and every two weeks, oh, I got my check. Because they take care of a lot of stuff for you. Um, what what are the basic things that an entrepreneur who says, you know, cosplay is my thing or crowdfunding comics is my thing full time now. What, what, do, you, what do people not think of? You don't get the luxury to quit when you feel bad. You don't get the luxury of a sick day. You can be sick. Yeah. But you better be posting something. You better be doing something. At least let the world know you're alive. Put out a pretty picture and say, hey, it's a beautiful day. Send me some love. Not feeling so good. Um, Don't be a sad sack. That will hold you back more than anything. Uh, Two of the biggest mistakes I see when people start going into (laughs) comics or cosplay or anything in this entrepreneurial realm I think I'm going to quit. I can't do that before. People are being mean to me. Can somebody buy a print so I can buy lunch? Like, no, you cannot be a sad sack. Suck it up. Put on your big girl cos panties and do what you got to do. And if you and if you need to go work some side jobs, cool. You are not necessarily going to go income from, you know, from nothing to building up. You might, if you're already that, that popular, then good on you. Don't go out in the world sad sack and crying about every damn thing. Uh, don't get too personal with that sort of thing. And you cannot quit. Yeah. I'm quitting cosplay. How many cosplayers have we seen that from, Jay? I'm quitting cosplay, you were mean to me. Like, if this is your job, you can't just quit. You've got to put in your two weeks at least. You know, you got to keep some income coming in. Um, and if you want to quit, that's fine. But if you're going to come back five minutes later and then quit again and then come back and quit again, you just look freaking stupid. So stop it. Yeah, it's, I've heard of people being you know, mean to cosplayers who are other cosplayers. I'm like, what's the deal with that? I mean, you know, you're just out there dressed up in costumes, having fun. Why would you be mean to another person? Um, because that other person might have a uh, an in to that convention and they don't want to have to choose between you. They will cutthroat you. If somebody doesn't like you, they will send messages to the convention, bold face lying about you saying, you said this thing. It's like, no, this didn't happen. They will go online and publicly trash you. You are reliant on this now as your job. So when other people come in starting trouble, it can hurt you. So, you know, making sure that you are emotionally stable yourself is very, very important. But they would absolutely sabotage you because, oh, you'll get, I've seen better. Oh, God. Okay. But that's just, oh, I had one guy who was like, oh, put on a skimpy outfit, blah, 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 blah. And they're like, there's actually no skimpy outfits in this cosplay. And like, if you knew her, you'd know that like she was a comic book creator too. It's just weird. People are, people are cruel. We've seen yeah. on posts all the time. You come to like, people just shut up. Like, don't be so mean. There's no reason for it. 
I could see the I could see the men cosplayers being jealous or or catty the even men because you know are actually mm, the least it, likely to do that. Yeah, men. It's least likely with men. It's like the, the best description of this is if a man goes out and he sees a bloke wearing the exact same suit as him. This is what we do. We go, hey! Where yeah. if that's a woman with the same matching dress, they go, right, I'm going home. Look, look, gone. It's And it's how it is at um, conventions. Like, if you go back to 2019, the most popular outfit probably for a woman was Harley Quinn. And yeah. the whole, like, conventions were full of Harley Quinns. And there were some fantastic ones. There were some that weren't so fantastic, but it doesn't matter. It makes you happy and it helps with your, you being able to be confident to come out of, you know, that world that you leave to go into the cosplay world, then, then just do it. But I don't know if it's so much in America, but I know there's a few cosplayers in the UK that if they are known for being a certain character, whether like, for example, if it was me as Thor, you know, they expect they feel like they are the only character, the only Thor or whomever out there, and they will actually make life hard for people and insult them. I've had that with Negan, where someone goes, "Well, you know, you've got blue eyes," and I'm like, "Yeah." Oh, my God. <laughs> but, that, but then, no word of like this. This oh. one, this, this one girl, this one girl actually um, really pissed on his parade by saying he's the blue-eyed Negan, and I went, "Thank you," but. Um, but this is the same guy who said this who couldn't do the voice. And I just went, holy shit, asshole. Ah. God, God damn it. And, you know, whereas I don't always look like a character, but if I could do the impersonation of it, I'll do it. Um, and that's another thing as well. Impersonations aren't important. Like, um, I, yes. um, a part of, I'm part of a group called Hero HQ UK, and it was actually Natalie, our Batgirl, who put me forward for this critical blast and told me about it. Um, but we've got a young bloke who um, does our Iron Man. He's only about five foot six, five foot seven. He's not very tall. And he gets absolutely slated online because he's so short in an Iron Man suit. But you know what? If you go out there and you see him with them kids, the kids don't care if he's five foot seven or nine foot eight. They absolutely love him because, you know, and he doesn't put the accent of Tony Stark on. He's got a whole accent. So he's like, hello, where? How's it going? And, uh, you know, it doesn't sound like Iron Man, but you know what? Them kids don't care. Them kids are happy. Beth, so. I say that all the time. I'm so glad that you brought that up because it's the most exciting thing I've heard in a while. I'm always, always preaching that, that the kids, they see Thor. They see Iron Man. They see Wonder Woman. They see Supergirl. And that's all that matters. And they're so excited. And you just made that kid's dream come true. I was out there with my friend, uh... You know, you ought to check him out. I think that he's definitely a contender. Goofy Kaka cosplay. Now, this is the grumpiest guy I know. He's super grumpy. So, like, mm, you know, and but he cosplays a lot of gender bend women characters as men. And when uh, he one of his favorite ones is his Western Wonder, and it's a Wonder Woman. If Wonder Woman was a cowboy. And he's got this big cowboy hat with this gold, like, Wonder Woman crown kind of thing with the star and this red button shirt with the W in gold and jeans with, uh, you know, that star sounds awesome. and the belt is not the cheesy Wonder Woman girly belt. It is a big festive cowboy belt with a W on it. And it's fantastic. He's got the big lasso and... He's a grumpy cuss, and I'm like, go join the costume contest. I'm not going to win. I don't care. People need to see it. They're going to get excited about it. And he did, and then he came back, and I was like, how was it? He's like, it was fine. <laughs> like, yeah, you loved it. You loved it. And then we're walking back to the car, and this little kid, mommy, 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 cowboy, cowboy, can I get a picture? Can I get Oh, and you can see he's trying to be all grumpy, but he's all happy about it. You know? And that, that right there. You know what I'm talking about, right, Jay? That feeling when that kid, you just made that kid's memory. Mm. You know, like people go through so many things, but if you can provide something that is going to give someone that feeling and that memory that they're going to hold on to forever, you <clears throat> live forever in that kid's heart. And, and you know, that's that shows how important these characters are to kids as well. I mean, if you guys want to see me choke up on a stream, go back to February 22nd when I was talking with uh, uh, the uh, comicbooksforkids.org group. 
uh, because they, they, he, t he tells the story. Mark tells the story of a, a guy in St. Louis who said, hey, I want to you know, help out and donate some comics to uh, St. Louis hospitals. And he dresses up as Batman and he goes in with these comic books and he's giving them out to kids. And he goes in this one room uh, and there's a little boy in the, in the, in the bed there. And he the boy turns to his mom and whispers something in her ear and she starts crying. And he talks to the mom in the hallway. He's like, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare anybody. I didn't mean to you know, make you cry. Anything. She's like, you don't understand. He hasn't said anything for four months. And when you walked in the room, he said, that's Batman. Hmm. And I'm like, you know. Uh, it's, um, yeah, I had a similar experience, actually. Um, just at Wales Comic Con as the Grinch. Um, like, the Grinch can come across as very scary for some kids. And I'll tell you what, if you try stealing a present in front of a kid, you get your ass kicked. It's quite <laughs> humor. Yeah, honestly, it's happened. Like, and you're like, hey, stop it. Stop it. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Go away. Um, but um, I remember being in the um, convention and um, this little girl was crying. I was like, hey, what's the matter with you? Come on, watch out the man. Watch out the man. And it was just me being like that. And all of a sudden, like, and the monk was like, oh, the stormtrooper made her upset, made her cry. I was like, how about a hug? And literally this little girl absolutely just came and hugged me. And she was, like, smiling, giggling. And, you know, it's just something like that. You just put yourself in the most, you know, uncomfortable state for yourself and out of your comfort zone. But if it's for the kids or whomever, then just do it. It's, and you, and know. you know what? It'll end up being for kids, even if you don't intend it to. I mm. cosplayed in 1989 as the Joker for a convention. And 89, by the way, there was no cosplay. Mm. Uh, if you weren't at a booth, no one just showed up dressed as something. Uh, mm. And I did. Um, and I they, they had this beautiful high arch chair at the uh, Hilton O'Hare in Chicago, just like the, you know, the Joker pose in the very first panel that you see him with his fingers steepled. And I just said, I told my buddies, like, oh, get me a picture of me in that chair. And I sat down in the chair and I did the pose. And he took the picture and I started to grab my bag and get up. And it was like, no, no, no. Can we get our picture? Can we get our picture? You know, here's my, I'm like, I'm a psychotic killer clown. And you want your kids pictures taken? We'll be sure. And they're asking me how much. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm not working here. Yeah, just, just take pictures. It's fine. I, that was my first revelation to the fact that, you know, the kids love that thing, that they're going to gravitate toward that. Yeah, I remember being in um, New York City Times Square and having all the um, cosplayers um, going around dressed up in certain characters and uh, they expect money for it, don't they? That's obviously what they do for a job and uh, um, obviously you Americans prefer, obviously do a lot more tipping than what um, as Brits do. I mean, I tip, but you know, there's a lot of British that don't. So it was just quite Actually, surprising. Really? It's like, oh, you know, it's, oh, it's a quick get picture. Yeah, quick picture. And then obviously they're looking at you and I was like, oh, shit. And then I had like $20 on me and like a two and like $2. I was like, I've already got $2. He tried to take the 20 off me. I'm like, you know, all right. But, uh, you know, I don't want to sound tight there, but uh, <laughs> a bit surprising, <laughs> but yeah. But um, well, <clears throat> you, I, I know you've got uh, a number of different costumes in your in your um, arsenal. Let's say, I do, mm. I do. Kara's got fifty two and more <laughs> because this was her her latest project. Which, uh, by the way, what a right there, fifty two card pinup. Uh, nice play on words, I thought. Uh, yeah. Where you know just yeah. various different uh, cosplays that you've done, done as both a book and a trade, uh, not a trading card set, a playing card set. This is actual like suits and suits and characters. Uh, I have not played with the cards. Um, I have. You know, I did not repeat a character. I know. I did and go I through did them. The bar version and the regular. I did not repeat a character. I was like, it's already not mint. As soon as I took the cellophane off the cards, but. Now, I'm at least going to make sure I don't get the ink worn off by uh, overplaying with them. Um, I guess I play solid here because careful I'm words there, careful, careful words there, mate. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I play, I playing with the cards is okay. Uh, it, okay, Kara's stop gonna, that. Stop that. Kara's going <laughs> to click off right now. I'm sure. What? <laughs> yeah, As, I'm, I'm sure, sure she's heard, heard them all. I'm sure she's heard them all. Yeah, but. Um, you can still get this, folks, right? This is a. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. One. And you again, another one that. that just went absolute gangbusters. Um, I'm going to paste, I'm pasting it into the chat so that's what <laughs> I can do with the last one. Um, yeah, you yes, wise guys, you, absolutely. You, you have a chance to back all three of these campaigns so far the unstable frequencies, uh, the, car, the 52 card pinup. Actually, um, Firebitch 2 is still up there too, as well. So you can just go to my. just. Look me up on Indiegogo. You'll see um, we do all of our campaigns 
um, in demand as well. So that way no one ever misses anything. And and they all could do absolutely flipping great. I mean, you know, so. these are, these are, you know, what, what is this? This is, um, find the scroll bar. This is a $52,000 campaign. Yeah. This one is a 38,000, almost 40. This one's a 45. Um, that was have my calendar. Audience. So my calendar, um, I did two images per month. I did 13 months. And then um, if you don't want the calendar, you can get the Cosplay Visions book, which is comic book size. There's variant covers in variant themes. And uh, yeah, you can see um, each image in the, in the book with like a quote from the character. Um, I have a cosplay bound. You see that is a bondage power girl inspired cosplay. Um, I had a buddy who was doing some bondage rope work for uh, a shoot for the weekend and he invited me. And so we actually shot one of our music videos there and then did that as well. Um, so yeah, we, I have a puzzle. You can get a puzzle. I actually have that on my store right now as well. Prints, music videos, uh, variant covers, the whole thing. Everything is gradable and, you know, CGC and CBCS gradable. Um, so I think CJ, here's a lot of things you can do with the prints of uh, your photography. You know, get get some get some Thor prints made up, some other stuff made up. And go to town. Oh, I actually do have another campaign coming out um, launching May 5th, and I'm not launching it. I've teamed up with Artists Assemble, and we're doing a, uh, a cosplay sketch card and trading card set. So some of the best trading card uh, sketch card artists have all joined in together. They've all been sent cards, and they're drawing my cosplays on these cards. And then there's also going to be trading cards available that'll come with it and um, books and all kinds of stuff. That, that That's what I should have done, Lee. I should have got two decks, one to open, one to keep mint. Because you know what I did? I, I bought the deck and then I bought the uh, the book. And I was like, well, you know, I can keep the deck mint and I can just kind of flip through the book. Well, I can't flip through the book because I ended up putting the book in a comic book frame <gasps> and it's now on the wall. So it's, you know, I could take it out, but it's work. So I just <laughs> The, the deck and I can flip through that. We lost Jay. His um we did lose Jay. His 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 Android connection dropped him again. Um there is a lot in regards to cosplay and I think that men are some of the most um interesting when it comes to that. I get asked by men, what about um, you know, what about men? It seems like it's all women. It's not. There are men out there that are very sexy that do only fans that that show themselves like one of your French girls and they do very, very well. But yeah, I've had, you're uh, have people to ask me. That, that fan base. So you're going to have to build that body as well and have that personality. Um, it really is just a personality thing as well as putting out yourself in that way um, and building a brand based on it. And you, they could do mouse pads with their junk in there. Like people do it. Um, there's also a lot of men who go the craftsman route and sell their crafts and sell everything uh, in that capacity and do more, more labor intensive cosplay. There's a lot of cosplayers who are working for gaming companies. Some of the big builders, um, SKS props is one of my favorite male cosplayer success stories. And they actually created their own line of foam and their own line of, um, you know, different prop, products and you can actually get them they've teamed up with blick which is a pretty big company so there are directions you can go there's cosplayers who work for hollywood and they uh you know they make cosplays they make costumes for celebrities so it really just depends on what you are choosing to do with your cosplay career but cosplay is not just dressing up in a costume and being cute. There's a lot to it that can be done. And it's just a matter of if you want to do it, you can make templates and sell them on Etsy. You can model. I do a lot of modeling for comic books. So you have options. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I've had people ask me from the very beginning, you know, bombshell, isn't that, you know, you know, that's, that means a woman uh, in the thing. So you, why are you doing men, uh, you know, winning the awards like, like this year? But, you know, we've had 
we've had a couple of guys every year get the bombshell of the month. Um, That's wonderful. I, and I, I'm I tried so to keep it as a mix. Yeah, we, it was our last year last year to do it because uh, it just became too much work to find new cosplayers every month. I'm like, oh, this takes like a week and a half to get somebody to line up. And, you know, if, if, we're, if we're booked six months out, I'm like, great. But then it's like it dried up. Um, yeah. Well, we lost Jay and he hasn't come back. back. I want to ask the uncomfortable question. And uh, if you want to if you want to Internet slap me, you feel perfectly fine to go ahead. Um, when you started the cosplaying, at what point did it become an option to do the more sexy cosplays, the topless cosplays? Um, so because I, you had a lot of those. I only do topless cosplays on physical products that I'm selling. I don't put it digital. Oh, and I'll get people like, oh, why don't you just give it to me here? And it's like, why don't you just ask your orthodontist to give you a pap smear? Because yeah. I don't. And I don't have to, and I don't want to. Um, I want to maintain that value. I want your grandkids to go through your shit and find my stuff in your comic book collection and have that glimpse into this society, into this. And one day in the future, they're going to say, wow, grownups got together and they dressed up as characters they loved. Like, I think that we're really the first generation that gets to still be a kid. I mean, really, my job is I dress up as cartoon characters and I color. That is the, and I write, and I write stories. That is the coolest job. I'm like five years old. This is great. Well, you but get I the same, too. Ability, I have the ability to go out and stay out late and, and hang out with people. And this is, it's exciting. And it tells a story. We love these characters. We love these, uh, these events. And we wear it proudly. So I hope that answered your question. Hopefully, um, oh, I got to scroll. I got to scroll past that one just for YouTube. Um, yes. Hope, hopefully the children of the future will find all that stuff in there and, and they'll look at it and say, so this is when it all started. And they're like just going to work dressed as Batman and Supergirl uh, as a regular basis. Okay. Just because but we're they can. adults now, right? When you're a kid and we see those kids and you're dressed as Wonder Woman and that kid loves it and they're happy. We feel that way too. We're excited to see Wonder Woman and She-Ra and He-Man and Superman. We are excited, but we're also grown-ups. Yep. And we want to do things that grown-ups do. And we want to appreciate things as grown-ups appreciate them. So why not take that cosplay into an adult realm? Even our comic books. Like, there's no difference between my topless cosplay covers and Alfred Trujillo's cosplay covers where he... Or, uh, covers where they're topless as well. So it's just about normalizing our way of life. That works for me. I just was curious, you know, as to how, how you felt about the first time you were doing that. I mean, you know, it's like, is this something I want to do? Or yeah, I'm totally fine with this. Why haven't we done this before? Well, and that's why I keep it because I will tell you, can I, can we talk about this? All y'all yes. people out there wanting to see titties. You're ruining it. You're ruining it. You're messing it up. Every time you say, oh, you're, bad, bad, you're so great. Bad. It makes us go, I don't want to put that cleavage shot out there. Oh, oh, oh. I saw a little bit of areola out there. Oh. Like, seriously? Put it back in your pants. Have some composure. The minute you tell a cosplayer, on a platform that will shut you down the minute your dumbass says areola, nip slip, whatever. If there's like a tiny bit in there, now we're getting flagged. Now we're getting shadow banned. And guess who ain't seeing no more titty? Yo, stop it, dumbass. I'm, 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 I'm not talking I'll to take you. It. <laughs> I'll not, take it. Not you, but you know what I'm saying, right? Well, yeah, I mean, I. I I, I definitely appreciate it. Like I, I wouldn't have bought the the alternate cover that I bought if I right. hadn't. Uh, and don't say dumb shit online. Yeah, that's how you. I don't understand why I'm not being your stuff. Cause your dumbass used the word nipple, areola, boobs. Stop it. You're getting us banned every time you say those things. Tell us we look nice. Say anything that doesn't draw attention to the parts that they like shutting us down for. Yeah. 
Oh, well, it looks like Jay can't come back. So, Jay, well, if you're watching. Work on him for, for, you know, for him. Yes. Um, you can find Jay on Instagram. I believe the link is below. All the links for Kara's projects, uh, I'm going to add to the pro uh, to the description below immediately after this so that they're there for you to uh, click on and go to. Uh, these are all in demand right now, right? I mean, there's there's yes, none that are, are like... Uh, um, Unstable Frequencies has not been shipped yet. It is still in production, but everything is in demand. So Unstable Excellent. Frequencies will be uh, looking about, um, I want to say August, because it is four stories and because we do have to get all of our art compiled and then letters and all that kind of stuff as well. Yeah, and I... It, it took me a second when I looked at Unstable Frequencies the first time to get that it was actually five books, uh, the, the four unique books. And then the fifth book was a, a compendium of all four stories. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So you can get all the four stories together or you can get variant covers or maybe you don't like zombies and you don't want that story. But you know what? If you make that decision, you're missing out because it's yeah. an awesome story. So um, it is not gore porn. I will tell you that now. There's a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of stuff going on, but it is not gore porn. There is no, it, it, it's not just a book of blood. So, you know, like I said, we've got a, a ghost story, a zombie story, a, uh, a murder mystery, and a story in an insane asylum. So we really mixed it up and you're getting a lot of different options. Well, I can I cannot wait to dig into reading that one. So, um, Jay, thanks for coming on uh, for as long as you could. Uh, wanted to get a shot of you holding up the uh, the medal that you had because uh, we did send out a medallion, an engraved That's medallion. So cool. every, every, yeah, all the categories got one. All the movies and comic book writers they they got it. Um, oh, I, I I thought he was out in the chat, but he's he's not. We uh, our comic book writer is still getting his uh, shipped to him soon here. Uh, Arachna 2, glad you were out here. I wanted to draw attention to the fact that Arachna uh, Comics is another one that takes advantage of a cosplay model uh, for a lot of their covers. So they have somebody who shows up regularly as their character, Arachna. Wonderful. On the covers. It's, a, it's, a, it's a thing, guys. You can uh, you know contract somebody to continue to be your, your representative. Um, Absolutely. And I don't need those tabs anymore. Uh -huh. All right, so... So, Kara, thank you so much for uh, agreeing to co-host this with me and uh, and letting us share your your project some more. Uh, would love to have you on in May when you launch the new project. Yes, um, May 18th, we'll be launching Fire Bitch 3, and May 5th, we'll be launching the Sketch Card Set. Come to us with both. Please do. Um, and, and, and hang around, because I, I want to ask you something about one of those projects after the show here, but I don't want to do it on the air, because it's, it's secret. Um, <laughs> so... Folks in the chat, thank you so much for uh, showing up here today. We don't have a show if you're not here to watch it. So we appreciate you being here. And as always, while you were here, we just hope you had a blast. We'll see you tonight. <laughs>